So, uh, big wild year doesn't start till 2019, but it, you know, we're picking everything in advance if we can. And what that means right now, sort of at the end of uh, May, the beginning of June, is that we just came out of spring ephemeral season. Um, so the leaks are are well past done and Delphine was able to get a haul of those and hopefully I can show some pictures but if I don't have the pictures handy for this film I'll just tell you that a lot of them are blanched and frozen in the freezer. Um, the uh, fiddleheads are all done. I looked at cinnamon ferns today and they're already two feet tall so they're way beyond picking um, but Delphine got out and got ostrich ferns by the gallon uh, maybe like three gallons of them which was pretty awesome and uh, now we tried digging some of the um, Claytonia Caroliniana, which is the Carolina Spring Beauty. Um, got a few of those, mostly as an experiment, and we might try and get some more of them yet while they're still up. Um, but we're really sort of transitioning now into perennial season. Um, so here's here's some dandelions, and I've been picking at them. I put aside some. Uh, of the uh, blossoms, which I pinch and then strip off of the green calyxes because they're very bitter. And uh, I've just been freezing these in a big bag. And you also just eat them up and they're pretty tasty. Um, I've also been collecting the buds. So here's a trick about the buds. This is one that's already opened and has now closed. Oh, maybe this one hasn't opened yet. This is an old an old bud. It's already well developed. If you go further down the plant you can pick these guys which are quite a bit younger, but really you want to go even deeper still. The best ones are usually right down in the center here and of course this plant doesn't have one so let's let's move along and look at a different plant there's a good one so older flowers at the top and then better buds down near the bottom and even even further still you see that way way down here and you have to like you have to get under there with a fingernail and just pop that guy loose like these here these are prime eating these are the sweetest tastiest ones that there are so if you can locate your dandelions by spotting the tops you can pick these guys at mid height there's nothing wrong with those but if you can get right down into the base of the plant and pick those very, very young buds, those are the best ones there. When you're picking the dandelion blossoms, you also get to develop a real appreciation for the insects that you're sharing that resource with. From small to large ants, hoverflies, other flies, flies that look like bees, and uh, some real bees themselves, small ones, bumblebees, little mitten bees and a real great variety of them. So, I'll show you what I picked today. Alright, this is a few things that I was picking today. So, we're picking now and setting stuff aside because we're assuming that we'll need some greens that we won't be able to access in the winter here and we want to eat them from um, January through till probably mid-April, January, February, March. That's 90 days. Half of April, say that's another 20, that's 110 days. If we want greens at at least two of those meals, that's 220 servings of greens. And we're planning for two of us. So that is 440 servings of greens, which is a little bit daunting when you say it like that. Um, considering that what I've got here, I'd probably consider about one. It's not gonna look like much when I blanch it down. 
Um, but this is what we're doing is sort of freezing up bags of blanched wild greens. So these are milkweeds. These are the smallest milkweeds that I could find today and I'm not blanching these. I'm just going to cook them and eat them as a reminder about whether they're good at this stage or not because it's been a while since I've eaten the shoots. Here, aside from the pieces of grass that have gotten in here, these are all dandelion buds and I tried to pick them as low to the ground as possible. There should be a cup or more than a cup here and there also were a few violet flowers that I saw while I was walking and I grabbed those as well because they've got nice color. There's a bug that I just picked out of there. And so what I'll do with this is uh, just blanch it in some boiling water for a minute or two, uh, cool it down in some cold water, put it in a baggie, label it blanched dandelion greens with violets and then that goes in the freezer and it'll make an appearance in January, February, March or April of 2019 in the big wild year. And this is this is our plan this summer to start stockpiling for the big year. All right, I just picked this pile of dandelion blossoms before I mowed my lawn, so throw those in the freezer bag with the rest of them. Fiddleheads, all that row. Over here we have daylily bulbs, all that row. Then we have leek bulbs and we have leek greens, all this row. Then we have milkweeds, false Solomon seal shoots. What do we have over here? Juniper? Yes. Juniper branches and berries. We have dried... These are... Um, this is what they are. Carolina Spring Beauty. Roasted dandelion root. Um, it's not nettle syrup in there, but it's... Um, marsh marigold. Oh, marsh marigold in vinegar. This is all of the dried dryad saddles. So that's not a green, but that's also part of the spring collection. Dried leeks and trout lilies, dried flowers and leaves. So I think you know who the picking force is here. This is all stuff that Delphine has been collecting so far. Super de super. All right, this is Delphine's super secret nettle picking spot. She didn't blind move hold me to take me out here. She's trusting me not to tell. Um, but this is an old, edge of an old farm area. So you can see, this is a carpet of uh, all jewel weed. And all the tall stuff, the darker green in the back, that's all nettle. And we're gonna pick a bucket full of that. Um, and that's gonna be a big quantity of greens that we'll set aside for the big wild year to be eating between January and May next year. And then obviously after May, we'll be able to get into some more fresh greens. There's also a fair bit of burdock here, I think. So we'll have to come back and dig some burdock roots later, maybe in the fall. So the trick is to wear gloves because the stinging nettles sting. They have little chemical crystals that will irritate your skin, but those dissolve when you boil them. And I think also when you dry them. Just picking the tops, filling the bucket. I better help out or that bucket's gonna be full before I do anything.
guy just passed one with a bird poop on it too. Yeah, well, as we've talked about um, some uh, nutrient values or not being able to find them, uh, lots of people on YouTube have been reaching out to me yeah. and offering to help find some of those values. And I did receive, uh, I did get a whole list of links. I was spent a lot of time online the other night reading through different journal articles about wild food nutrition and nutrition and are they recent yeah they're most of them are relatively recent but it, even the recency doesn't matter so much because I don't think that the technology for determining nutrient content has changed all that much in the last few decades the way they determine it is probably different but no but I wonder that people are interestingly more variety now also. yeah of 11 kilometers a day plus or minus and the women do seven plus or minus and that's in a foraging day so the men are hunting and looking for honey and the women are collecting greens and digging tubers um, but the walking only makes up 11 percent of their total uh, calorie expenditure for the day which I thought was interesting because you think of like oh I gotta walk so far and you think of it as work but it's really it's really, you're a really efficient walker, right? You don't burn a lot of calories yeah. walking. And I thought it would be interesting because I have that bicycle, right? I'll do some calorie measurements with my Fitbit, um, looking at how far I can travel by bicycle and how much more efficient that might be than you know, walking. You cover so much more distance for not many more calories. Plus, you can carry so much of the bike. got our haul out and we've only been out here for a short while out here for a short amount of time uh, well long enough to get really covered in thistle burrs but we've got a full three and a half gallon four gallon, four gallon. pail of um, nettle greens 
which are super nutritious, easy to store, easy to freeze, easy to dry, and so on. So that'll be really good for us. Uh, and also, you know, we could say we also were scouting other supplies that'll be out here in other seasons. Yeah. Got a little bit of exercise besides. So the next step, oops, I'm out of the camera. The next step in the picking process will be to rinse these probably, um, and then uh, parboil them and freeze them in bags. So that's, uh, that's what we'll show next. Stuffing muffin tins with blanched nettle and freezing them in pucks. Serving size portions. <laughs> So this is the boiling water to blanch the greens. You can see the color change because there's already been a bunch of them gone through. Over here, rinsing those guys, but also filling the sink with cold water. So as you pull the blanched greens out, after they've been in the hot water for about two minutes, then they you want to cool them rapidly in cold water. And it's even better if you can throw a few ice cubes in there. And then from there you can drain them, freeze them. And there are some greens that were picked, but do not require processing. Just some fresh greens for salad. Little tiny basswood flower buds, daisy petals, daisy buds, lamb's quarters. Little pollen pockets off of pine trees. Dame's rocket. Big bowl of black locust blossoms. And some early rose petals. 